Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making it happen. And today, I can't believe it, the BQBX 3D printer has finally arrived. It's a printer that I backed, the first printer that I've ever backed on Kickstarter. This was back tail end of last year. Should have been delivered in December. And here we are in May. Um, what happened? How did it happen? But anyway, it's finally got through um, customs, it's got off the ship and, you know, it's got through COVID as well. So let's get straight on into it. I'm going to be doing an unboxing and probably first prints with this one. So uh, sit back, relax and enjoy. Here we go. Man, I am so excited. I ordered this back last year. It's just arrived on my doorstep today. Really, really excited. This is the uh, Big Tree Tech BQBX, which boasts the world's lightest direct extruder FDM 3D printer. This is because of the 219 gram direct drive extruder. It's got a 32 bit motherboard with 400 megahertz, a Raspberry Pi expansion, seven inch touchscreen, 0.9 stepper motors, and it's a creative idea achiever, according to the Kickstarter page. Now this Kickstarter backing was a favorite of mine, certainly over the Creality CR6SE. One of the main reasons that I wanted to get this printer is because I kind of felt like everything was rolled up into one. So the awesome kind of boards that I'm used to, along with a printer that's been made by them, what could really go wrong here? Well, a lot actually did go wrong and it isn't necessarily Big Tree Tech's fault. We weren't expecting a global pandemic. We weren't expecting a number of issues with things like printers not being able to get into various countries. We were expecting Brexit, if uh, if that's uh, something to go by. Thankfully, uh, they seem to have not taxed me any more money for this particular unit. So I'm very thankful to that for them for that. Now, I paid around about £225 for this on an early bird deal. They're retailing now on Jake3D for £465. And I think even at £400 or £400 odd pounds, I think that's probably still worthwhile for, for this sort of style of printer. It has got some unique features to it, much the same as the uh, CR6 had this kind of different style of screen. Uh, the CR6 didn't quite have the build, build volume that this one has. This has a 250 by 250 by 250 square. Whereas the CR6 had the 225, 225. Uh, I think it was 250 tall as well. I don't know. I'm looking at it now, actually. It's printing incredibly well. Uh, now that it's been upgraded with its latest firmware, don't forget to check that video out. Anyway, moving swiftly on. Uh, I've got 7-inch touchscreens on my other printers, my CR10s, uh, the S5s. And they work really, really well. And also my rat rig printer as well. So, like I say, it, there was a lot to love about this. Double Z prop sensors as well. Auto bed leveling. A whole bunch of stuff that just was really, really appealing for that kind of printer. It's taken so long to get here. I've kind of forgotten a lot of what the features were supposed to be about. So, following on from this video, obviously I'm going to be reviewing it and upgrading certain things on it. Like installing a Raspberry Pi 4, which I'm probably going to end up doing tomorrow as I've only just ordered it. Oh, hello there. Right, let's get straight on into this, shall we? Camera one, camera two, camera three. There we go. Right, let's get cracking. I'm so excited about this, I can't tell you. Right, I've got a couple of views here. This is obviously the top view. I've got this front view right here. And then I've got this little side view down here. So hopefully all together we'll uh, know exactly where we're, uh, we're heading on to. So. Let's start at the very beginning. We have got a very sharp knife, a rusty sharp knife in fact. I'm just gonna cut the sides. Here we go. Now obviously this probably won't be the first uh, BX 3D printer that you're gonna see, but it might be one of the first in the UK. Uh, I don't think there were that many that were ordered in the UK. I think there were around about 50 or so. So um, that's, uh, I'm gonna do what, uh, there was a guy who criticized me a few months ago and he said, cut the sides off the box. And he said, that way you'll be able to open the flaps easily. So I'm going to do that and do what he says. Let's move that down. So let's cut these off. Hopefully I won't need to uh, use this box again. I'm sure it's going to be absolutely perfect. Right, let's have a little look what we've got in here. Well, that's good. I'm going to try and monitor, ch monitor the chat as best as I can, but uh, obviously I'm on my own here. Oh, tell you what, that looks nice. Let me show you this. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, there was a rumor earlier 
that I read online that there's no ducks inside of these and I am quite a vast select collector of these little ducks so um, now that looks nice so this is the uh, BX user manual oh that's lovely dear value customer thank you for your purchase it's a great honor, honor to do business with you this has been sent with great with good care in fact we hope that you're satisfied with the product and our service we do our utmost to serve you oh that's nice after service card. That is a nice little touch, actually. It's nice when you get uh, when you get something that's uh, a little bit more bespoke. Max printing speed 100 millimeters. Normal printing speed 60. Various languages 250, 250, 250. Uh, layer thickness 0 0.1 to 0 0.3. Nozzle diameter 0 0.4. Print accuracy to 0 0.1. PLA, PETG, TPU, TPE, ABS, nylon. Yeah, I mean it's all pretty standard stuff. But uh, it just goes to show there's a lot of instructions in here on how to install the Raspberry Pi, which again, I said, as I said before, I'm going to do that tomorrow. I'll do that today. And uh, Luke, who's been doing a lot of the uh, BX support, uh, guided me in the right direction. We've been doing a uh, how to install that. Uh, there are a number of ways of doing it. So, yes, excellent. So, what's really nice about this from the very get go, let's try and move this around a little bit, is this lovely little box. And. I'm guessing this is where the screen's going to be. So I'm looking forward to having a quick look at that. And this is normally where you might find your duck, if you're going to get any ducks. But as I say, I've been told there's no ducks, which is, yeah, oh man, that is lovely. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So, oh, my knob's fallen off. Hold on, let me pop it back on for a second. So, this of course looks wonderful. Uh, it's a it's a different type uh, type of screen to the um, to the 70 that I've got on my uh, my other printers, um, and on the back here there seems to be a a Pi LCD. So I'm guessing this is what we connect the Pi up to. There's a little uh, USB connected here as well, uh, and uh, the quality just looks really nice, and you know so it should do as well because this company you know they're not new to this. They know what they're doing. Um, that, that does look phenomenal. Uh, and also in here we have a couple of little connectors as well. Now I ordered the Raspberry Pi 4 for a number of reasons. One, it's the new one. And two, um, I kind of felt it was the best one for the job. I normally use the three Bs on most of my Octoprints, but um, I wanted to go a little bit further with this particular one and uh, get the best possible stuff out of it. So, um, UK lead, which is encouraging. We've got this little extruder here which yeah I mean it is light very light in fact uh, nice little connections on the back here this is bizarrely uh, they went with the choice of using a HDMI connector to to power all this and to run this this sensor um, and to run this hot end so that's uh, it's nice it looks uh, it looks really solid there's a proximity sensor here as well um, that's how we're gonna be leveling things up we've got a 3d printed part for the fan cooling or for the nozzle cooling rather um, yeah it looks nice very nice indeed yeah it's very sturdy it's all metal around here as well um, a few people have said it's kind of Hemera looking but the Hemera is much larger than this uh, I'll try and do a comparison if I can later but this is this is tiny tiny in comparison to the Hemera so what have we got here so we've got a little pack in this little pack we've got micro usb leads we've got data bags we've got um a usb key we've got loads of cables and bits and pieces which i'm guessing is going to be for the integration of the screen and the pi we've got some tools so the usual kind of stuff we've got cutters we've got spanners we've got uh, a number of uh, wrenches as well uh, depending on where you're from we call them allen keys in the uk because they were made by a guy called allen and we've got the uh, spool holder as well and in this little bag here, we've got the screws and a nozzle and a few more screws. Good. Big Tree Tech did send me a little while ago um, a T-shirt and a few um, hot end parts as well. And I'm not too sure why they sent me those, but um, we shall find out. We'll find out if we need them. Again, spool holder as well. I'm going to upgrade all that stuff anyway because uh, I want to use the one with the bearings. Let's get some rid of this. I'll tell you what, the packaging on this is just brilliant. Small amount of filament here to uh, to run our first tests on. Really well boxed, really well packaged. 
and let's just lift the X out. Ooh, that looks nice. And these carbon fiber details do make it look really, really nice. Let's get rid of that. Chuck that on the floor. Okay, so let's whip him out. So we'll check. Right, let me just move a couple of things out the way. Nice organized bits and pieces here so you can see clearly what is going on. That's out of the box. Right, here we go. Right, let's get a couple of things organized in. Let's go back over here. Okay, so first thing first, I think what we're gonna do is probably ignore the instructions just for a minute um, because I kind of have a grasp of what we're gonna do. In fact, we will read the instructions. Um, Okay, very simple stuff. Let's start at the beginning. Okay, so the good news is, is that they do have these little bags and they do correspond to uh, the sections that are on here. First section is to pop this onto here. Second section is to put the extruder on. Third section is to put the uh, screen on. And um, I've just literally popped on the spool holder as well. That's all done. And then it's connecting up the display, connect the additional wiring, which is just at the back here that I'm just untaped. And uh, the rest is relatively simple. In fact, it's literally four screws uh, to attach this onto here. There's four screws it appears to be to attach the hot end. And again, the hot end is, um, is programmed off a, uh, or works off a uh, HDMI cable, which uh, I don't know if you can see that there. Uh, the light's going a little bit now uh, and then of course we've got the proximity sensor here as well and uh, the hot end it's, it is really light super super light so what i'm going to do is because i think this is going to be the tricky bit actually getting this on while it's uh in a dodgy angle i'm just going to pop this on now so either way it's the same but different yeah that's that is quite difficult to get in there but we'll give it a go there we go What an angle, see it at a different angle, here we go. So I'm just gonna pop this hot end, hopefully on, if it doesn't keep moving. Come on, off we get. There we go, we're going to get it now, there we go. Won't do that up too tightly to start with, we'll just get the other sides on as well. Again, the other side's a little bit easier. Sorry that you uh, maybe can't see, but literally it is two bolts. Two at the top, two at the bottom. And that first one's going in nicely. Let's grab the screws, which are here. Again, everything's described in the manual. It's it's just awesome, just absolutely awesome. And again, this is what I expected. This isn't, you know, I don't know why I'm so surprised, acting so surprised at how good it is, because we kind of assumed that it would be. So, and I know they've had a lot of hate with uh, various bits and pieces going on over the uh, last couple of months and how perhaps how the communications have come across but man, let's, let's move on let's get over it let's get over it let's get these printers going let's, uh, let's start funding the community with uh, awesomeness so bear with me just for a second while uh, I pop this last screw in and he's going in there nicely just making sure that obviously I don't want to cross thread anything because that would just be a calamity and we also want to do them up reasonably tight as well I'm just going to redo this one because it wasn't quite where I wanted them to be there we go I mean the only thing that would have probably made this a little bit better would be for um, these to be on linear rails but I guess at the same time Something's got to give, and I guess it could always be an upgrade in the future. Okay, so two screws in the bottom of that. There's a bit of tape that I'm just going to remove off here. There's loads of tape that's hanging, uh, holding a lot of the bits and pieces on here. Um, there's a Z sensor on here, double Z screws, lead screws coming in. So I've just popped him on the top. That was nice and easy. This is on here, and let's move that out of the way. Right, let's get this into position. The best position for this, I imagine, is going to be just like that. Look at that, look. How easy is this? I feel like I'm on QVC or something. Okay, so I'm going to do uh, one side up first. This is a little bit tricky to manoeuvre around. So what we'll do is we'll just pop them up, move them over here. That's cool. 
this cable at the front here is the display. It's, uh, it's quite a, it's quite the cable. Lots of bits and pieces coming off of that. But uh, again, we haven't even got the uh, Raspberry Pi on here yet. And again, hopefully, I'll be doing a stream on that tomorrow. I hope to do it anyway tomorrow. And uh, I'll get that set up and show you how that works as well. Um, there's a really useful guide that Luke sent me earlier on how to wire this straight into the board so you don't need another additional cable that runs out the front of this. Um, and I've got, I've got the impression as well that this 7 inch monitor here is going to kind of be a little bit in the way um, because all my, all my printers tend to just, you know, go in a line. Um, and I think that is going to knock into my build space a little bit. But uh, I suspect within weeks there'll be modifications and stuff for uh, people that are perhaps doing this in a slightly different way. Now, um, on the side of this printer as well, you can immediately see the voltage. Um, and in my country, it's 220 volts. In your country, it might be 110. It's always, always worth checking that just in case. And uh, I can clearly see I've got a meanwhile power supply in here. And I'll show you the other part in just a second. I don't want to knock anything too badly uh, while I'm just wiring this, this one up. Uh, I don't want to lean on anything too hard either. But I can see there's a Meanwell power supply uh, 350 in the bottom here. And it's 24 volt, which is, again, what I was expecting. Uh, the bottom of this printer is actually quite nice as well. There's a couple of elements to it that uh, make it look kind of special. Um, it's, as I say, it's, it's very well designed. And uh, again, I don't know why I'm surprised at that. It's probably because a lot of the other stuff that I've been re reviewing as of late has been uh, not as good. But rest assured that the stuff coming in, again, you know, we get this quite a lot where we talk about a Friday built printer. Um, this certainly is not uh, a dodgy Friday, Friday afternoon, Friday evening printer. Um, this is this is a, this is very much the quality printer that I was expecting, which is obviously phenomenal. Right, let's just make sure this screw goes in. Um, I'm not going to cross thread anything. Just make sure it's all done up nice and tightly as well. Again, there's tape on um, on some of these little connectors here just to uh, keep everything in uh, in the right places. Uh, the Z, so the Y axis is already pre-wired. We've got the HDMI cable that's coming out the back as well. Uh, I've just plugged in the power cable as well to the uh, power socket, uh, which was a UK power um, power adapter. So hopefully we'll be uh, we'll be good to go with that in just a minute. Bear with me for a second, guys. Just want to make sure that uh, hey, I've only got to do eight screws in total, right? So or eight, nine, ten, twelve screws in total. So I might as well make sure that these are done up properly that one time only. Um, because this is going to go straight onto printing uh, as of tonight, full time, uh, until uh, something else happens. And, well, until the Raspberry Pi arrives, I suppose, tomorrow via Amazon. So, just so I say again, uh, whereabouts is it? This is heavy. Okay, right. So, on the back here, let's have a look. Yeah, just on the side of here, there is a um, 220, 230 um, power supply uh, indicator, and you can literally just flick that over as and when you need to, uh, depending on which country you're in. Uh, as I say, it's always important that you do double check that um, to make sure that uh, it's so good. Honestly, it's so good. I'm so impressed. I'm so happy. It was sort of like, it felt like it was just never going to happen. I think that's probably what the... Uh, what the main issue was I think about this. Um, so we've got the HDMI cable here as well. Just make sure, I'm just gonna check it over, just make sure there's not anything I'm missing. That's nice and put in there. So we've got the SD card at the front, we've got the power, power port at the front for the uh, Pi if we decide to roll it in that way. Uh, we've got a bunch of little cables. Just make sure that doesn't move around too much. So again, yeah, so the 230 um, cable is just, uh, points just down here. Let me try and get a slightly better angle of that. Um, it's just in, just in the under, underneath here, little switch here. You can just barely make that out. Uh, but it would be important if uh, I don't mention it and uh, you have some kind of issue. Um, there is, I've just noticed as well, there are 
some LEDs along the top here uh, that shine down. There is an LED on the hot end as well. So I'll be interested to sort of see what that looks like. Um, right, so we've got the hot ends on, this is on, what's next, the screen, yeah. Okay, let's do the screen real quick. There is a safety film on this. Let's peel that off. Ah, bugger it. Okay, that's kind of frustrating. I have, this is so annoying actually, I do have a little bit of plastic just here now. I've been taking that off, never mind. Now this is interesting because, let's put that down for a second. Uh, because my dog is now barking, sorry about that. Let's go over to here. So, <clears throat> this cable here, most cables you'll find that you can just slot it straight in. This one's got a couple of gaps to the left and to the right of this socket. So it's going to be important that when you plug this in, you do make sure that the top and the bottom are in alignment. Uh, I'm going to have to do this slightly unjarred out of the way of the camera. Because if you have anything... I don't know how this is how this is wired. It looks pretty sensible, to be honest. But if you do have any, yeah, you see here, if you could potentially pop that up and pop that down. You might, you know, spike the board or spike the motherboard. So just be really careful with that. Again, this is it just looks awesome. It really looks awesome. So there's three modes on this: the Marlin, the Big Tree Tech LCD, which uh, we'll be using today, I imagine, and also the uh, Pi LCD as well. So uh, you can stream video and various other bits and pieces like that. Um, let's just pop this onto here. Okay, there we go. I've got fingerprints all over it already now, so that's great. And this is supposed to be a higher definition than the standard um, sevens that I've got already. So uh, again, I'm quite looking forward to seeing how these are gonna look in comparison. Uh, and I believe the detail on the buttons and stuff is, is going to be much better as well. I'm looking forward as well to seeing what people are going to do with this sort of firmware. So for the CR6, Sebastian did a hell of a lot of uh, work with the uh, community user interface. Um, and I'm just wondering how long it's going to be before people start releasing customised menus and stuff. Because, you know, this hobby is, that's, that's kind of the way it is. You know, this is what we do. Modify stuff and print cool things and, you know just try and be awesome in our bedrooms or garages or studios or wherever you might be or school or whatever god i'm just rambling on now right we're nearly there don't worry rest assured we're going to be okay in the end so there's two points here that you can run the sd card off you can run one off here or you can run one off the side of the uh of the uh lcd screen here i normally run them off the side here but of course if you're running a raspberry pi you're going to be using octoprint of course you are awesome stuff right Let's move back to this camera for a second. Right, so also in this box we do have a little connector which is for the Raspberry Pi 4 which I'm going to be using tomorrow. So I'll make sure I keep that in here. And there is a HDMI adapter there as well which I'm not entirely sure what that's for but we're going to keep it in this box and keep it safe. I do have a large number of these Big Tree Tech Boards um, boxes and they are really handy just for keeping stuff in and parts and stuff. There were no ducks in this um, set up today. I'm a little bit disappointed about that, but that's my only thing that I'm sort of disappointed about. So I'm getting messages galore here at the moment. Uh, so what I'm going to do next then, uh, I'm going to plug the HDMI cable in. The only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is where I wire stuff up to because um, I've had this before where I plug something in and then it can't quite reach or it's too far or the cables are in the way. So I believe from looking at the documentation, it goes on this bar here. But what I don't want it to do is obviously kink up and you know wear out and stuff. So I'm just gonna have to have to look at how that how that works. But I think that's a pretty safe bet. So what I'll do is just make sure that it's all the way over and give it a tiny bit of slack. I'm just gonna pop that on here for now. If it doesn't work, then I'll just cut it off and uh, we'll be no worse off. He's gonna come round to here. The feet are quite nice on this as well. It's really sturdy, you know, some of the printers that I've been reviewing recently, they do tend to kind of move about and wobble around and stuff, but this is, um, yeah, this is, this is top quality. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is hopefully, which you're not going to be able to see, here we go, let's move it around a little bit. There are a bunch of connections at the back here. Now, some of these connections are for, uh, simply for the Z axis, there's two of those. There's Z1, and on the other side there is either Z0 or Z2. C2 we're going with today. 
The other cable on here as well, it is for the um, Z axis and the RGB. So I'm guessing that's for RGB comes down here. So let's make sure we plug it into the right ones. Okay, there we go, RGB. No, that's the wrong one, here we go. Good news is with this is that you can't really get it wrong because there's a two pin and there's a three pin. So it is almost idiot proof. So there we go, so that's on that side. Uh, the other thing we need to plug in is just this one over here, which is the X axis. And we will plug him in just like that. I think this might be the fastest unboxing that I've ever done. Not that I've done loads of them or anything, but uh, you know. And of course, sorry for the dodgy camera angles. I'm no Joe Telling, you know, I haven't got a whole crew behind me. I'm just some dude uh, making stuff as I go along. So it is what it is. Right, we will have a quick look at the instructions just before I start because, you know, ultimately, oh, well, that's just gone on the floor. But ultimately, I don't want to get it wrong. And uh, you lot will laugh at me and poke fun at me and call me names and whatever else. So let's just have a quick look at that. Printed frame, spool holder, tools and hardware. A, and it says, it says you're supposed to get a duck. Where is my duck? Look. It does definitely say, check it out, it does say you're supposed to get a duck, right right there. There's no duck in here. Big Tree Tech, what have you done with my duck? Now I have got plenty of ducks here, now you've probably seen them in other streams if you've uh, viewed them before, I've got a number of them here. So uh, not all of them have names, some of them do. But uh, there's a load there, there's a load at the front here as well, just off screen, I think you can just about see it. Um, so let's have a quick look. 250, 250, 250 FDM, 0.1 uh, mil to 0.3, 0.4 nozzle. Filament that it can print is PLA, TPU, P PETG, TPE, ABS and nylon. Uh, usual stuff, 24 volt, 350 volt, uh, 350 watts rather. Hot end up to 100. Uh, oh, that's quite low. Uh, sorry, max, max temp hotbed. Sorry, 100. Right, okay, that's not too bad. Uh, max temp for the nozzle, nozzle is 260. Um, OS compatible Windows 7 and 10. Printing max speed 100 millimeters per second. Okay, we'll wait and see about that. Or a bed leveling supported, language transfer supported. Uh, anyway, I'm just waffling. So let's have a quick look. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so we've got some proximity sensors. They're all set up. That's all happy. Screen's on. We've plugged the uh, spool in. We've just got to pop that uh, spool into the top. Uh, we've done that, he's plugged in already, uh, and it actually says, yeah, it does actually say on here, it should go down here and here, so um, while I'm at it, uh, before I wreck, wreck the place here, I will just pop the other tie on here, uh, I won't bother cutting the ends off just yet, just in case I do need to move anything, um, but hopefully that'll be okay, uh, and I'll probably do this one a little bit later as well, so we'll move on from there. Okay. What's next? Uh, so just have a quick look at the printer again. There he is. Uh, oh, shut up. Uh, I think we're good. Right, so the next thing is plugging it in. And here it is. Uh, make sure it's switched in the off position. It was switched into the on position there for some reason. And uh, we're going to have some fingers crossed here. So it says here to switch it on. Uh, before I do that, I am going to just make sure that I've got some filament kind of ready to go here which I do and it's all tangled up and stuff but <clears throat> you know whatever I'm sure it'll be all fine in the end we're only we printing a test print anyway and uh, I may just put that on my Instagram it's, oh that's not very good is it very brittle uh, I may just put that on my Instagram rather than doing the full model depending on what models are available of course good god that springs back doesn't it right then okay here we go Man, this is just in time for Easter. How good's that? So, uh, I did get a notification about this yesterday to say that it is gonna be shipped, and I thought it was gonna be probably a couple of weeks, and lo and behold, got a tracking number, information said it was coming today, it was coming via uh, Hermes, and uh, yeah, it, it just, just arrived. So what it says to do is switch it on, uh, Hope for no smoke, because that's what we do with all printers, not just this particular one, all printers, we don't want any smoke. We plugged everything in, everything looks great. Um, there's a bit of movement in a few of these little uh, bits and bobs here. I think they should probably be screwed down. That's my only uh, 
sort of concern with that. Not that you know the test print's really going to show any of that kind of business, but I'm just going to give that a little tightening off there. That's interesting. What have I done that? Okay, that's better. Just give that a little little tweak there and there, and a little tweak here, just to hold that bearing in. I don't know why they've done that. There could have been a nice little part that they made for that. No matter, no matter. Okay, um, I'm stalling, but we are gonna have to switch it on. So we don't want any smoke. Where's the little SD card? That's the other thing that I'm going to need. Uh, we don't want any smoke, so let's just have a quick look here. And uh, one, two, three, here we go. Oh, look at that. It took a second to warm up then, didn't it? Whoa, what's all that noise? Oh my word, okay. Let's have a quick look at what it says. Okay, so I know what we've got to do first and foremost is level the bed. So uh, the good news is, is that we, it is a hot day today here it's in, in the UK. It's about 25 degrees at the moment, as you can see. That's the, that's the bed. Uh, the display is really nice. Uh, let's just have a quick look around the display. Heat and fan information, movement information. And you've got your extruder information here. Uh, emergency stop. Got a bunch of settings in there. This is for the machine, there's tuning information. Oh, PID tune, that's nice. Tuning steps, not even the Creality one had that to start with. Terminal as well, so you can set steps to that. Uh, you can set your millimeter steps, depending if you wanna sort of mess around and upgrade stuff as well, set your jerk. Uh, in this feature, again, it's very, very similar to the normal uh, seven inch display. And you have uh, LCD brightness go dim, that's quite cool. Rotary knob, you can turn a little uh, LED light onto that. There you go, it already went dim and uh, power loss recovery, Marlin mode and full screen. Again, there are three modes to this, so you can mess around with that as and when you choose to. There's a connection thing here. Okay, I don't know what that is, but we'll leave it alone because I you know, don't want to mess about. I will also see, actually, let's see what the um, information says here. So December 16th, you know, this is, man, I feel, I feel sorry for those guys. They, they've had a lot of crap off a lot of people and uh, you know, Maybe we should think about what we say to people. That's the, uh... anyway, we'll move on from that. Um, let's go to movement. Let's go to auto bed level and we're gonna hit start. Uh, we're gonna hit the hot bed to 50. So that's hit the okay button for that. Meanwhile, while it's doing that and while you're watching that diligently, I'm gonna try and find the SD card that was in the little, uh, in the little doofer because I don't quite know where I put it. Unless I've thrown it out in the box, of course. But hopefully I haven't. Oh boy. Where is that? So once this is heated to 50, it should automatically start the auto bed leveling uh, setup. At least I assume that's what it's gonna do. I've got a bunch of stuff here, but no. I did have it a minute ago. Oh sure, unless I put it in the box. I put it in here. In the keep safe box. So if you're just joining us, oh here it is, I did put it in there. Safe keeping that is. There you go, see? Still got it. Okay. Let's plug this into the side of the printer. And we are still waiting. We're at 44 degrees so far. That is an epically quick build, I would say. And hopefully, hopefully we will uh, get to 50 and things will start going swimmingly. So again, we've got, uh, I'm gonna remove this. I'm not gonna have this on the top for very long. Um, I'm gonna put a nice um, rollered uh, one up here instead. Uh, oh, here we go. So now we're starting on the altered bed leveling. Let's get back down to here, as you can see here. I'll start in the probing off. Let's see what we get this time. Yeah, so this probes 25 points on the bed. Uh, so if there is any irregularities, it hopefully will uh, point that out relatively quickly. That's looking good so far. Again, you will get a kind of next level smoothness when you upgrade to Octoprint because there's a bunch of settings on that that will help you out tremendously when it comes to leveling the bed, um, which is obviously brilliant. So it's looking good so far. I'm quietly confident that this is just going to be amazing. Um, I'm going to, before I start the print, I am going to go back onto chat and just make sure that um, 
everybody's doing okay. I just wanted to concentrate on making this, and this this is something I bought. Uh, again, the Kickstarter, whole Kickstarter thing was just a um, a stressful moment, I think, for everybody, uh, especially Big Tree Tech. Um, they, you know, those guys have gone through quite a lot. I've now understood. And, uh, you know, we've had, this has been at sea for months and it's finally here. There's probably things they could have done and I get that. And I know they've taken a lot of slack, but that's hope that we've got a, uh, an, an absolutely awesome, brilliant printer here that, um, you know, is probably going to change your perspective. Now, I am a little bit worried about some of the gantry settings and I do feel like perhaps it's slightly, a slightly adrift possibly on this side. Um, and I'm just looking at that by eye, but after today, I'll uh, I'll set that back up and we'll have a look at the uh, the print settings and the Raspberry Pi. And if I can do that tomorrow, obviously I'll update the uh, stream as well and just let you guys know that I'm going to do that. Uh, and it might help you obviously before you uh, set yours up or if you're still thinking about maybe buying this printer. 3D Jake are selling this at the moment and I believe I paid 200 pounds, I think 215, something like that on the early bird thing. Uh, that was supposed to arrive in December, obviously didn't arrive. Uh, but I think it's at 260 quid, I think, online now. Uh, sorry, 460 pounds, rather. Uh, so even at 400 quid, I think it's still a, uh, still it's a pretty good deal. So, let's have a look. That looks good. I think we're all right. Do I want to save it? Yes, I do. Um, let's hit back. They've saved everything now, that's good. Let's hit back again, and again. And to menu, and da -da -da -da. settings, no, oh my god, I'm lost, print, there you go. <laughs> so we're using the TFT, again there's a TFT here, and there's another one that's in the side, uh, so we, we want the TFT SD card for that. You can plug a USB in the side as well, on the onboard SD, but we won't. Uh, so let's have a look at the models, what we've got. Uh, we've got a Benchy, we've got a Flex Rex Improved, and we've got a Draw. So, what I'll do very quickly, uh, hopefully this won't go all completely wrong. Let's, uh, no, let's go back to here for a second and let's see if we can have a little chat. Yep, we are back, we're back. I think we're back. Good stuff. Hello everybody. Oh, hello Sam. Yes, it's a, uh, what a day indeed. What a day indeed. Um, so, what would you like to see? I have a preference that I would probably like to see the uh, Benchy being that the uh, Suez Canal is uh, doing its thing at the moment. If you would like to jump on this chat, you can, of course, and the StreamYard link is now available in chat as well. Um, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go with the Benchy. I'm just going to have a look through the thing here. Yeah, all proxy. How you doing, mate? I hope you're well. Uh, yeah, you can install video games. Of course you can. You know that. Um, hello. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Right. Anyway, Benchy. Right. Let's do it. If you want to jump in, please do. I'm going to hit the button. Uh, I might need to do a little bit of auto leveling when 3D Benchy. Okay, here we go. Start print. Okie dokie. Now that's quite nice on the display here as well. Wink. Let's get down to here. So I think that's kind of nice. Or oh, we're, we're chirping. What's it chirping at? Why is it chirping? I don't know why it's chirping. It's chirping. It's like a little bird. Yeah, it's a really good looking display. Why is it chirping? What's that all about? E is heating, apparently. So we're at 55 already. We've got the hot end now heating up. Man, that is really quick. Look at this. I don't know if you guys can see that, how quick that's moving up. That is insane. Good God. I guess I guess because it's a small hot end that maybe it's... Um... Hey, guys, hope you're well. Uh, I might need to jump back on the printer. Uh, my volume went straight up. Sorry about that, dude. Okay, if you guys do want to jump in. Oh, thank you, Sam. That's very nice of you. I'm sure you'll take £2.50 off me another time. So I just want to make sure that when this does also level or try and level, uh, it's obviously going to home in a second, that I'm able to also um, 
mess around with the uh, axis if I need to. Uh, I don't know quite where that is. Tuning, probably. No. Parameter settings, no. Right. I know someone's just joined. Into that one. So this light's now on down here, and we've also got the light on above us as well. Uh, I know someone's just joined, so let me just jump on that. Hello, James. Hey, Mr. Prentice. How are we? I'm amazing, mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. That's a very large screen for a very small printer. Well, you know me. Can't help myself, can I? It's not. So, okay, think... so you just have like full opto print functionality then? Well, what, like what, yeah, so, just, yeah, just so what, let me, let me, okay, we're, so we're printing now, so it's all good. It's all good to go. So what you have in the back of this, in the back of the screen, you have, that's not too, not too good, is it? Uh, in the back of the screen, you have, let me move over here a little bit. You have a, uh, a connector and you can basically plug the Pi into the back of the screen. And uh, today there's been, um, I, was, I was asking uh, Luke, who's been doing a lot of the stuff on, on the BX. Uh, he was talking about a GitHub page. So he shared this GitHub page and I will put it in the links later on of basically how to get some little dew point connectors and basically plug those into the Pi and plug that into the back of the screen. You don't have to have any cables going into the front of the machine. You know, we've to print normally, yeah, yeah. You sort of plug it in. So that removes that altogether. I think there's only four cables that need to be on it. Um, so, yeah. So, and then of course, then you can stream it. And as you can see, as you may have seen at the beginning of the video, the guy was kind of going through the motions of using it as a desktop. Um, so you can stream Netflix, you can do whatever you want to do with that. If you, you know, if that's your thing, um, I just yeah. wanted it because, you know, at the time I wasn't really doing what I'm doing now, but I just wanted something that was a little bit different. And, you know, I, I do rate the big tree tech boards. So yeah. it, kind of, it kind of made sense for me to kind of get this and think, well, is this going to be awesome? There's a couple of things on it, like these little, um, there's two bolts up here that hold a bearing in and, I don't really see the point in them. I know what the, what, the, what the purpose is, but it just seems a bit weird that they would put that on there, but it is what it is. Um, what, the, the bearing sits over the uh, the lead screw? Yeah, so you've got two screws here, yeah, yeah and then the bearing is, that, so this kind of pinches the bearing, which is, right. quite, I mean, it makes sense why it's there, but I don't know, I like a, I like a plastic clip or something just to hold it in place, really. Uh, if you remember with the Creality ones, you can literally shake those things and uh yeah. you know if they're not if they're not right there they're a load of crap so um what's this roast duck <laughs> is my duck warming up yeah it is it is um yeah so i'm 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 pretty i'm pretty impressed with it actually so far i mean the build quality is awesome it is quiet but you know i've got three other printers on the go in here at the moment and um you know it's gonna it's if you've got it in like a bedroom or a study or something like that i think it's going to be very good for that uh i'm still the jury's still out a little bit on the hdmi lead and i'm just wondering if any hdmi lead will work with that or if it's rated in some way um i but, doubt uh, it i mean so so surely it's got to be a it's got to be like a 21 wire gauge inside of the inside of a hdmi so like i'd, I'd expect so yeah so it's it's got to be rated so what, what 21 is rated at at what eight and uh is it eight or 12 amps i can't remember anyway but might, like, there might be more than one or two um yeah uh, they might split the load voltage. they might split the load across it and again i, I it's been such a long time because obviously when when you're researching a printer in the early days you know you, you want to back it and you think about doing kickstarter and all that kind of stuff um you really research it but it's been such a long time and you know to be honest i just didn't think that it was really going to ever happen i was at that sort of stage where it's like well if i get it great but you know it's kind of done it would have been great yeah. in december i think it, it, yeah. they, they would have sold a lot of these but um it's almost it's like if you speak to any of the creality guys about the cr6 it's almost like a dirty word it's weird it's like oh i don't really want to comment on it i don't really want to talk about it that's like, well, yeah why actually it's all right um but i didn't want the cr6 and then i ended up getting the cr6 um gifted to me prior to even this arriving so um yeah. i'm going to sort of put them off against each other because the quality of the cr6 at the moment is is really good really really good um and this is so does, so does the big tree does the big tree have auto bed leveling does yeah. it have a sensor it does yeah the sensor so just what's, here 
Right, but it's a separate sensor as opposed to the CR6 where it like compresses the hot end or whatever it is that it does. Correct, yeah, it's a proximity sensor on that one. Um, right. And it also has, um, uh, what do you call it, um, the bump stop setting on it as well. So um, there's no uh, X and Y switches. It, um, it's also oh, it's sens on. senseless homing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah senseless homing on that. Um, and I, say, you know, I just couldn't believe it. You know, when you get that email and you're like, yeah chinese you know chinese tracking numbers all right here we go then i'm more yeah. disappointed i haven't got a duck to be honest that was the um <laughs> that was the thing surely one most... of the files one of the files they've got to give you on the sd card has got to be a little duck hasn't it no i was hoping they might do like a special edition one i mean don't get me wrong the kind of rolls royce uh printed card that they gave is right, you know, yeah. is is very nice you know i feel like i'm in the exclusive club now um but again you know, uh, it's funny, actually. When does it say? Uh, oh, it doesn't say a date on it. It's sort of a scribble. It gives a shipping date. But, I mean, this all this stuff was shipped out in December, and it's just been sat on a boat. And then they couldn't get it into the country. Then now now a lot of the guys in the States, I'm reading, um, various other places around the world, are bottlenecks in that uh, uh, evergreen um, Suez Canal yeah. situation. So I it's, do it's wonder not... how long. I do wonder how long the company is going to be using that as an, exa as a, as an excuse. Like, well, you know. yeah. I mean, the thing is, the thing is with this, I think they could have they could have shipped these out a bit quicker. I think they mm. could have air, they could have put them on the air travel and stuff. But the the communication has been shit. Actually, it's yeah. been it's been pretty bad. Um, and I think they could have done a lot better. Now, don't get me wrong, Luke. I don't know if you know Luke uh, over on the on the support team on that. He's been phenomenal, and you know he's kind of keeping everybody in check and stopping people from being. Um, you know being a bit crazy hey alan thanks mate i appreciate that that's lovely Woohoo! i feel like i won the lottery i won't see that for three months though unfortunately it's all good thank <laughs> you mate um they named so it's funny the alan keys that we've got in the uk they're actually named after that guy his name's alan so oh okay yeah so he, he came up with that um he's uh he's a good guy there you go i don't do much so yeah so it's, it's good and you know it's silent and it's looking quick it's got a um it's got a metal a metal bed so you can literally just pick it up and flick it down i noticed on the end of pro i've had to replace that whole bed and um and stick a glass uh, glass bed on it because it's just yeah horrible and it and as it was printing it was printing in an arch so yeah so the um the the sort of the pei magnetic sheets that you get yeah. Generally speaking, they're not great. So once you start printing over about seventy degrees, um, they just lose all their magneticness and or magnetism, and then they just start curling up. So has this one got like? Has this one got embedded magnets more like a Prusa in the bed? Like it's an aluminium bed, embedded magnets, and then the and then the sheet just snaps on. Well, it looks like there is a film on it. There is definitely a film on it. So uh, that right. I don't know. Um, but again, it, the, but the, even the bed feels like the uh, the um, the magnet sh magnetic sheet feels more quality. You know, it's like yeah. that end thing is just like crap. Um, yeah, whereas exactly. this this is like really really good. Um, like I say, you know, I, I was kind of expecting it to be good, and I think I think I've got what I wanted. Um, like I say, there's a I just want to see what people come up with next, and if you take sort of Sebastian and the CR6 community firmware then you're going to start seeing, I think you're going to start seeing a lot more um, creativity, I think, with this particular um, printer. And, it, and the reason I wanted this one was because it was slightly bigger than the CR6. You know, it had all the features on it. The screen is, you know, it's a novelty item. It really is. But, you know, if if you want to impress somebody, I think it's one of those things where you go, oh, have you seen my 3D printer? It's not some, like, wired up, you know, scraggly bag of crap. It's, um, yeah. you know, it is pretty good. But, you yeah. know, I'm... I'm 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 impressed. I'm impressed. Hey Dan, hope you're well. So, so the extruder on that is the new Bit H2, which is, is yeah. for all intents and purposes a Hamera clone, but apparently that one is actually lighter and has a higher gear ratio. So it apparently has so. More, more torque and and yet it's still somehow lighter. Yeah, it's 219 grams. It's much smaller than the Hamera by a mile. You know, it, it yeah. is it is significantly reduced. Uh, I'd say at least by a quarter. Uh, and I've got a Hamera. I was going to bring it out, but I forgot to bring it out earlier. But uh, as I say, um, yeah, I mean, that's quite heavy. This thing is is pretty sorted, actually. It's, um, 
the only thing I was wondering about is like that proximity sensor. It's sort of like, you know, making sure that that's set up correctly. And of course, you can't use proximity sensors on um, mirrored beds, can you? So you're going to have to use this bed, yeah. I would imagine, or something similar to it, uh, even when it sort of ends up kind of wearing out. But it's, it's working quite nice. It's wearing away quite nicely at the moment. And I, feel, I honestly feel like I'm in QVC. And next up, we've got this range of jewellery. It's going to be amazing. But, do, you uh, ever have, do you ever have this problem? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Hi, right, I'm Clark Smith, and I can tell you a thing about jewellery. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's weird. Hey, Victor, hope you're well. Hey, Mark, hope you're well. Hello, Mr. Tripod. I'll tell you what. I had a lovely, lovely time earlier when I was um, using this printer and it was working completely fine. Just saying. And um, no, it's, it, it's all right, actually. It is it is pretty damn good. And, um, you know, um, it's a shame, really, because I, I ordered the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 today because I thought, oh, well, I'll get that done. And, you know, it won't be here for a few days because it was... It was bound to come in a couple of weeks time and it was coming via hermes which if you're british and you know anything about hermes you'll know it's the worst company of, of sending anything anywhere so it's um and i was absolutely flabbergasted that it said before one o'clock and it was before one o'clock and it wasn't kicked down the road um because i checked the cctv and even if it was kicked down the road uh they packed it so well i've, ne I've never seen anything like it i've never had a printer that has been so well packed and the CR, CR6 came quite well packed, but not, you know, there were still things hanging off. Even the Neptune, there were things hanging off of it and, you know, yeah. things had broken in transit. But this was incredibly well packed. And um, as I say, you know, the stepper motors on here are uh, 0 0.9 degrees rather than the uh, 1.8. And, um, you know, it, it seems it seems quite good. Yeah, it seems it seems to be printing this benchy out quite nicely at the moment. Um, so... You know, it's let's try and make that a little bit bigger. Let's see if we can do that. How do we do that? Like that. There we go. Uh, the lights are, yeah, they're all right. I suspect, uh, you know, if you're going to be doing Oxford print and stuff like that, um, you know, great. But uh, yeah, you know, um, are they are the, are the lights addressable? Like, can you change the color? Yeah. Or is it just on or off? Yeah, yeah, they're RGB, um, so you can you can mess. I, obviously. You know, I haven't done anything with it. It's just, it's a white light at the moment, which yeah. is, you know, it's like a mood lighting, I suppose. Um, the L LED, in fact, um, you can see the three colours actually coming out of the LED, uh, reflecting, reflecting, trying to make it white. So you can actually see that it's in it, there's got an imbalance in the LED on that one. Um, but, it, you know, for what it is, um, it, you won't have any issues with that. And to be honest, if you're thinking about putting LEDs and stuff and NeoPixels and all that kind of craziness, it's... Uh, you know, it's funny though that the screen is literally the same size as the print bed. Yeah, it is big. And, and whilst, so whilst, whilst I understand that you know, you get the Raspberry Pi, and you know, it's like it's a nice, it's a nice screen. I don't really see the need for it to be four foot wide. Like, it, it could have just been a nice touch screen that you could that they could have put on there. Like, it didn't. It didn't have to be the size of like an iPad mini. Well, this is the one that I've got on the CR10s, both CR10s and the Rat Rig as well, which is basically that same one, but a slightly right. lower resolution. Um, and, you know, if you imagine if you've got it on like a, uh, like the Rat Rig, which is obviously a square, um, you know, you can have that poked up in the side, hit the buttons, you can see the display from afar. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, you know, it's a, it's a 60 quid screen, I think. So, um, it is what it is. Uh, I started off with 3.5 inch ones and then they brought that one out and I was like, I've got to have that. So 3D printing is a little bit like, um, like modifying 3D printing is a little bit like having a shitty Ford Fiesta as your first car and putting out <laughs> on it. You know, it, yeah, very true. It, I mean, the thing is, is I'd, I'd understand if they put more features on it, but they've just made the buttons larger. Like <laughs> they've, got, <laughs> they've got all that screen real estate and they could have been like, oh, you know, we're going to put, the speed and we're going to put how long you've got and we're going to do like a mesh visualization thing and all of that and they went ah oh, no we'll probably just make all the buttons big yeah but again you know what mode you what mode would you most use it in it's quite ironic because there's one printer that i've got and i always just use it in standard marlin mode so it's just marlin um yeah just really big. It. it is yeah just really big so 
um you know when you get down to using it as using the pi interface you know am i going to be using it as something else am i going to be using it you know to watch tim's live stream am i i don't know i just i just don't know i don't know what i'm going to be using it for but will i use it more on the pi setting or will i use it more on you know the, the color screen or will i use it in a different i don't know i don't know and i think you know i think once people start getting this in i think you're going to start seeing some quite interesting dynamics on how people use this printer uh, and it's quite ironic really because you get these 3d printing manufacturers who kind of have a basic idea of what they they think people want and then when they get it out into the yeah. open market like the community firmware you couldn't z hop you couldn't do a bunch of stuff with it um and it's all just stock marlin you know marlin programming and that's yeah. what Sebastian said you know it's, it's stock it's available it's there it's, it's, yeah. it, it, it's marketing guys designing a printer or you know or or something like that rather than rather than someone who who actually 3d prints saying these are the features that we need like i don't I don't really think at this point in 2021, you should be able to say that that, 20, that 2209 stepper drivers is a feature of your machine. It should no. just be standard, you know, much like you shouldn't ever have to these days test to see if your machine has thermal runaway on it. But thanks to the <laughs> trunks, but thanks to trunks apparently you do. Apparently that's a feature that you have to see whether or not your printer's got that. It's just, Definitely. you know, it, it's absurd. It's absurd things like that. And, you know, it's, it, it no, comes sorry, down it, to marketing but exactly and you know people will buy stuff if they think it's you know uh it, there are you know the cr6 there are a couple of cool features on it but it is basically a tarted up ender you know it, yeah short, short middle and end of it it really is a tied up ender and seeing them next to each other and it's i will um i will do a, a thing in the studio at some point where i've got nine creality printers all sort of in a line and how similar some of them actually are um yeah it's you know uh, a lot of people talk about this open source and what's open source is the printer design not necessarily the firmware so when you're talking about features and stuff big tree tech for me has been the kind of go-to company uh for the stuff i wanted to upgrade so when i when i was introduced to tripod for the first time and he was doing his uh ender five uh plus and he was putting a big tree tech board in there it made sense and then it's quite funny that you see the cr6 and what the big tree tech do well they build their own board for it um so you can hot swap that and the community firmware works on that as well. So, you know, what is feature rich is, I, for me, is certainly the quality of the print. And that mm -hmm. will, you know, hopefully we'll see we'll see that. Now, the other thing is when you've got a printer like this, nothing works. There's no, you know, very few things have um, uh, a profile, you know, adapted to them. So now I'm using Prusa Slicer. I've got to kind of look around and find out where, you know, because I know this isn't supported yet. Uh, the CR6, I don't think. True, but, 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 but fundamentally, it's an Ender 3. Yeah. So 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 change your retraction because it's now direct drive. And yeah. surely at that point, it's just an Ender 3. You know, dimensions-wise, accelerations-wise, nothing nothing else is doing. So, so, I mean, they didn't put linear rails on it, for example. So you're not yeah. going to be able to go at blistering speeds. You know, yeah. you're, still, you're still limited by the fact they're on V-slot rails. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I would have liked to have seen, um, you know, a bit like the rat rig with the uh, uh, with the sliders and stuff. I think that would have been quite nice. Um, but you know, again, you're right. I mean, it is a, it is all about the marketing. Um, but the quality prints that I've seen on some of the machines, it's um, yeah, it's it, it looks so good. okay. So so regular so regular retail price outside of Kickstarter prices. Yeah. How much? How much is that now? I think it's 460 quid. See, that's a lot of money for an extra screen on the side of an Ender 3. Yes. Because I, cause, I mean, I, I appreciate it's a nice machine, but I could buy an Ender 3, a Raspberry Pi 4, the screen, and I could buy a BitQ H2 separate. And surely at the end of it, I would have that machine. I mean, it wouldn't have LEDs, I'll give you that. But it would have that machine, but I just... It would just have an ender it would just be you know it would I'd, I'd still get change out of what like like 260 quid ish well i'll take your point there but let me tell you this what you won't get is this veneered carbon fiber no it's but, you know, in, in, in all in all seriousness though yeah i mean you, you're completely correct there um question on there is adjustable belts yes they're adjustable here and also on the front um 
Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. But again, the quality of the build is better than the creality. Um, oh, I'm not, yeah, so I'm, I'm not debating know. that at all. You know, I, yeah, I think but, I think that anybody would uh, anyone who says that the Ender Three is a perfect machine is either drunk or has, has just never really used one. They just they just understand yeah. the concept of, of an Ender Three. Um, you yeah. know, but but something but something like that to 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 put yourself at that price point mm. where you're competing with Sidewinder X ones where you're competing with, you know, where you're competing with larger machines. I mean, you could buy a CR-10S Pro for that. Yep. Well, I think I think the other thing to to consider um, is the price point that I bought this at was at 200 quid. Okay. Yes. So, and that's so, a fantastic price for the machine. I, I 100% would agree that 200 pound for that machine is, is a brilliant price. And if that was the retail yep. price... Yep they wouldn't be able to keep them in stock they just no. wouldn't no. it would be no. they'd just fly out but at, i mean that that that's that's a chunk that's a chunk of cash that they want for it, an it is, with a big it is. but, but let, let's be fair when you look at some of the new printers that are coming out into the market right now so the ethel sun sr right yeah. like it don't like it whatever you know there are some fundamental flaws with that printer to really from the very get-go and it's things yeah. like you know, you've got Tronomic stepper drivers on three of the axes, and then they cheaped out on the um, on the, yeah. uh, uh, for the for the two or three pounds that it must make in manufacturing yeah. cost differences. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not loads. It can't be. No, but again, it's a bit like um, you know, if you look at GoPro, right? They say that you can get the new GoPro Nine or whatever it is for two hundred and thirty nine quid. The regular price is five hundred and thirty nine. It's never been five hundred and thirty nine quid. Never ever has it been. That, that amount of money in, in, in the entirety of it being a thing it's never been that amount of money so uh what i would say is that i think people are going to start seeing these I, I i think it might have i think big tree tech i think this printer scared them i think they bit off a little bit more than they could chew with the kickstarting campaign i think there was a lot of anger and a lot of backlash same as what creality had but without yeah. the fires um and without you know when a company you know that's the crazy thing when your r d department's got to put out well actually guys You've got to be careful because there might be a fire. There could be a small fire risk. That yeah. is piss poor. And yeah. it's all down to the way the bed is configured and the way the bed is wired. And, you know, that is that that for me is just like, wow, really? Is this is this we're really having and, that kind of conversation? And, and with the CR6, what, what amazed me when that came out is it's not like with Big Tree, where that's the first that's the first printer they've built. They have Creality, like so. So yeah. this is the, the big tree. It's the first one they've actually done. It's the first one they've gone to the drawing board and said, "No, right, it's not. How do, no, 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 they've not. got the, they've got the B one, I think it is, which again is another good printer. But they're not. This is the funny thing. They're not that well known for their three D printers. printers. They're better yeah. better known for their component parts, which is kind of crazy, really, when you consider it. But that's that was my me you know method of thinking. Well, hey, this is going to be a fantastic printer, right? Because it's got all the cool parts in that I love to upgrade all my Creality machines with. And again. Yeah. This is such a false economy. We shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be buying these printers and going, right, now what are we going to upgrade? Now what are we going to be buying? Now what are we going to, you know, in order to make my printer yeah. better, you may yeah. you, you end up failing. So, you know, and that's been my point for quite a long time, actually. Um, but it depends what you're doing with them, of course. You know, if I'm making small component parts for a bigger, you know, robot or something like that, I found that actually using the smaller printers is easier for me because I can set a load of them up. It doesn't take up that much retail space in my studio here. Um, and I can just let them crack on. Whereas yeah. the, the, the ideal scenario was going to be one CR10, the rat rig, this printer, and that's was all I was going to have. And that was kind of in my mind. So I was like, yeah, no, I have a sofa in here and I have all this other stuff. Um, one, <laughs> no, you can't two, fit anything three, in there. <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got 12 printers in this room right now. 12 yeah. printers in this room. <laughs> and I've got another four in the house. I've got another one coming tomorrow and I've got another one on dispatch from the States. So, yeah. You know, it's it's turning into I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I think I think I need help. You know. Yeah, but you won't this find any here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, will, I will sit there and you go and you'll say, "Do I need another printer?" Or I go, "Well, you don't not need another printer." So it no, does feel like no. maybe you should get one. Um, yeah. So <laughs> Jason's comment. It's fair. It's so it's not that I'm not excited about the printer. To be fair. It's a very nice machine. You know, it, it, it's ticking a lot of boxes. It's, it, I think what I find slightly underwhelming is just that there are things they could have done that would have made that a fundamentally better machine. You know, they could have put linear rails on. 
I'm not really understanding entirely why they've decided to go for senseless homing, bearing in mind that on a machine, like in, in a traditional Cartesian, there's, there's no material benefit in being senseless homing other than saying that it is. You know, in, in, in a Core XY, you could say, all right, maybe that matters because you can pick your homing space. You know, you, if you're doing like, if you're doing, I don't know, if you're doing 3Z leveling and all that sort of stuff. But on a regular Cartesian like that, I, d I don't, I don't see why you would make it senseless homing. Surely it's just it's less accurate uh, than than a, than, a, than a physical switch. So I'm not I, I'm not really I'm not really understanding what what the, what they hope to get. It was just it just feels like one of those times where they said, "How many buzzwords can we fit on the side of a box?" Yeah, I see that. I see where you're coming from there, but it's just one of those things that I mean, on on this size of printer, you know. I mean, ultimately, it comes down to two things. Does it print well? And how long does it print well for? Yes. Well, we shall find out in the next you know 30 I mean? minutes. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. but do you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, so d d d can, can you get a good print off it? And can you reliably continue to get good prints off it? Because you can get a good print off of an Ender 3. It will just be the one. And then, <laughs> and then, and then that'll be it. And, you know, no, no, you no, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're so <laughs> wrong. My end of free pro now that it's fixed is awesome, and uh, See, it's a, that's not the sentence know. that you wanted to say, was it? That now that it's fixed, it's <laughs> you know, I, I went back to I went back to Congo and went, Yeah, you sent me a really bad printer, and they were like, Oh, we'll give you 20% off the next one. I'm like, Nah, cool. no, we, need, we need to, we need to, we need to, we need to talk, we need to talk about this, we need to, you know um you know i've got another any cubic turning up tomorrow uh they're sending me a board for the any cubic that uh, smoked up the other week mm -hmm. i say last week in fact so you know I, I out of all of them um you know it's it's nice to have like right now there's two printers printing physically at the moment the other the q5 and the ender has just stopped because they finished their prints um but the cr6 and the and the bx it's just nice and quiet there is a fan noise. I don't know what's making that noise, but it's um, yeah, it's it's quite nice. It's quite soothing, in fact. I will but say that I'm genuine. I'm genuinely impressed by their H2 extruder. I think I think to take something, because E3D spent a long time developing the Hemera, a long time developing the Hemera. I guess, yeah, um, and you know what? It's funny because I I did see the interview that they gave about um how much work actually went into that. And, you know, what uh, things like, you know, material and stabilization and bits and pieces yeah. like that and what they're really in for. And yeah. uh, I think the print general or somebody like that put it put it out, didn't they, I think. And it was like an exclusive and stuff. And um, actually, I've got a little bit more uh, understanding of what their business model is now uh, due to that video, because I, I didn't really understand it before. I was just thinking, oh, it's the usual thing. Send it out, blah, 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 you know, make some money. Ha ha ha. Everyone else is screwed, that kind of thing. But they're yeah. not like that, which is really nice to see. Um, but again, you know, with these Chinese companies, if you look, if you go back to my original video that I did on the BX, that I was really excited to get this printer, and I invited Luke on because I kind of had this feeling that when I was asking the questions to uh, Big Tree Tech, they weren't going to be able to answer me uh, either honestly or uh, with any um, understanding of what actually the question is. And yeah. Luke, Luke really did a good job at you know the interpretation because he's got a good understanding of this machine and how it all works. Uh, and again, like I say, he's a he's an awesome guy on this front, you know, making this stuff, uh, supporting this stuff. And it's quite nice. Somebody in the West giving that kind of support um, mm. effectively for free, um, which is yeah. which is kind of interesting. And, um, you know, uh, thank you for thank you for being there, dude. If you're if you're watching, if you see this later, however it works, um, you know, Hello, Chris. Hello, Anne. Hope you're well. This is a seven inch touch screen. Um, and hopefully tomorrow uh, we will be uh, one band Marine. Luke is a great guy. Yeah. Um, hopefully tomorrow we'll, we'll do the um, Pi 4 on this as well. Apparently it's super, super easy to install and uh, we'll see how that works. Now, at the moment, it doesn't look doesn't look too bad. Um, so bear in mind, you know, it's just chuck it on and see what happens um it's not bad and it's not beached either in the Suez canal so you know that's nice to see from a benchy i suppose at the moment not that i'm tempting fate or anything but uh it is what it is um 
But yeah, if anybody wants to jump in, Jerry, if you want to jump in and say hello, there's the link there. You don't have to, of course. I can just keep rambling on to James. I'm sure we can do this all day. You know, it's, uh, it's good. But, you know, we'll, we'll print this one out, see how it goes, and then uh, we'll probably call it a day for that. But um, as I say, so far, it's, um, yeah, I, can't, I do like it. I must say I do like it. And there's no, like, other than this bit at the top here, it doesn't feel cheap. You know, the majority of the parts on here are metal. In fact, the only parts that are a little bit iffy are these little back plastic bits, which just sort of seem to pop off. They don't right, seem to have yeah. any have any gravity to them. Um, but other than that, you know, everything else seems to be, you know, pretty damn nice. It's uh, it's quite a nice little printer. Um, I think if you're a beginner and you want something that's not going to be sounding like a zx spectrum on steroids um which is you know what we all had to endure in the early stages before trinamic steppers um so you know oh matt you're tired that's a shame mate <laughs> that's because you stay up all night watching these chinese channels mate 100 percent there 100 percent. so yeah so like i say mate it's um it's here i don't know if you're going to be able to get any of these anytime soon unless uh the retailer has purchased them i think they only sold 665 units at two and a half thousand quid um so i don't know if that's units or if that's sales um so i guess we'll have to wait and see and the funny thing is when they when they uh marketed this they did they had a overwhelming response to the numbers which is kind of crazy being that they're a company in china that can produce on mass very very easily especially in shenzhen um yeah. it, it doesn't it doesn't seem and a lot you know uh, if you look back to the teaching tech videos you know those guys were reviewing these on 8-bit boards before these were really fully tested um so the risk of kickstarter I, to be honest i don't think i'd do another i don't think i'd do another um kickstarting campaign i, I it's just not worth my time um but i do have somebody incredibly sexy wearing an orange t-shirt coming in <laughs> here he is hey guys what's going on hey jerry how you doing your mic sounds really nice it got better yeah i deleted most of my obs settings i've, I've been working on the mic all morning trying to get it fixed yeah that looks like a great machine that's a shame that happened kind of like what happened with sun Lu and that dryer but yeah big tree makes a lot of great products and they're yeah, reasonably they priced but I mean, that, at the time, you know, I was like, oh, this is going to be awesome because it's the product that I like. It's got all the components that I'll, I'll call there. You know, I like it when companies try and it doesn't always work, right? When they try something new. So this ultra light extruder, great. But for the size of the printer, I don't really think it's going to matter that much. And to tune it up to 100, you know, millimeters per second, you know, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. But I'm going to put it for its paces. Um, this isn't a review or anything like that. This is literally just an unboxing and, you know, see what you get. Where is that blue light coming from at the front? Is that a sticker? Oh, no. It's the uh, it's bed leveling knob off of one of the blue lights in the room. I can see this blue light. I'm like, what the hell's that from? But, um, yeah, it's good. It's, it seems all right. It does seem all right. Um, how are you, though, Jerry? What are you working on at the moment? Well, I'm printing out parts for the droid for Friday, uh, working on the track. I showed you some pictures earlier. Yep. And I'm trying out that new filament by GST 3D. It's PLA plus, 10 rolls for 100 bucks, free shipping here in the U.S. It's awesome. And uh, that's my phone ringing. Yeah, it's really good stuff. It's pretty, really nice. So, yeah, I'm working on this. I'm working on, this. I'm working on a chibi spawn. I'm painting, hand painting right now. That's what I'm, I'm working on. I'm pretty sure that was Bruno Mars then. And thank you for the demonetization. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I like <laughs> Bruno Mars. I listen to heart, heavy metal, I listen to everything. So uh, that's the belt that I've got so far. Um, that's on the uh, that's on the Q5 printer. Nice uh, for, the droid, for the droid building thing that we're doing uh, on Friday uh, nice. midnight UK time. It's uh, and it is it's it's cool. I mean, look at that. It's it is cool. I printed and, five uh, parts. I printed five parts on the Hypercube as a test. They came out fine. So I went ahead and loaded up the build, build with all of them. And it was late the other night. I was getting ready to go to bed. I figured I better go check it. I came back in. They were about halfway printed and something happened. They came off the bed. And I had this yep. huge black blob everywhere. The hot end was a nightmare. Yeah. So I stopped the print, spent an hour cleaning up the hot end. Uh, 
put some uh, nanopolymer adhesive on the bed, and now they're about halfway again with no problem. Yeah, I'm have to, having to do it one at a time at the moment, which is monotonous, as you can imagine. Um, yeah. But I'm getting the best results out of it doing it that way. So I'm going to continue doing this. But I am going to be – I'm working on a project at the moment for – Sounds weird, but uh, about to start doing something for TCT. And uh, I know James oh, and I, we also, we also spoke about this, but I'm also doing something for TCT in Asia um, next for next month. Uh, so I've got nice. to kind of get it done and finished and out there, you know, relatively quickly. So I've got a new partnership that I've literally just formed with somebody. Um, we're, we're just at the final stages of, you know, understanding what each other are going to do and stuff. And um, it's going to bring... Uh, uh, heightened reality to uh, to my channel, I hope. So there's going to be loads of giveaways, lots of stuff happening. Um, they, prom they promise quite a lot as well. Um, you know, filament to a worldwide audience and all that kind of stuff. And it ties in really well with the sponsors of uh, my channel, which is 3D Filiprint. So, um, you know, again, it, it all kind of one hand washes the other hand. I say that quite often. And, and you know, you can buy this product. You can buy these products from, from those guys as well. So, you know, as I say, it's... Uh, it's going to be interesting, but um, yeah, stand by for action on that one. It's uh, again, this one of the reasons why I'm getting a lot of these printers in at the moment because I need small printers to produce these parts at quite a rapid rate. So you know, um, hopefully we'll uh, we'll be doing something good there. Hello, Maker Viking. Hope you're well. So I'd be interested to see how the how the H2 would deal with both flexible for your yeah. the TPU that you're printing for the tracks, but also yeah. if it could actually if it could do TPU as a multi-part print. So I've, I've, done a couple of TP, I've done a couple of TPU prints on my sidewinders and things like that. But I have to admit, I've not, I've not, I've not dared to attempt multi-part printing with hey, TPU yet. Sam, because these tracks rotate on those cogs, those wheels, any kind of TPU should be fine. I don't think it's got to be the softer like the NinjaPlex. That's what I'm printing mine in. But as long as they're TPU and they're pinned, they should still drive fine, right? Totally, yeah. Uh, the, the the next one I'm using is going to be 95A uh, flexible on that. Okay. And, um, you know, the, the tracks are going to be, it's a sizable robot that we're building. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, this is a side product project to everything else, but it's going to be for the uh, September TCT in Birmingham in the UK. So um, looking forward to uh, to getting that out there and probably scaring James a little bit uh, with, uh, with what we come up with um but it, it, it's you know like i say I can't, wait for that. I can't wait for that benny hill video of me being chased around the Birmingham <laughs> TCC i used to love Christ. benny hill i loved him you Maybe. used to know him you used to know him <laughs> 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 jesus christ he, yeah i heard the the life and i heard about him on youtube and his life and all the money that he had he lived poor and he didn't cash checks and he didn't want money, but he had all his fame, and he just dwindled away, dwindled away and died in an apartment somewhere. I think in New York or something. Hey, Marcel. Hello, Maker Viking. Tommy, everybody. Hey, Tommy. How you doing? Yeah, so we are we are slowly but surely getting through the motions on this, Benchy. We're going to call this the uh, the Evergreen ship. Um, not too dissimilar for the uh, one that's blocking the uh, Suez Canal, I think, still at the moment. No, it's and, not blocked. Uh, it's, it's, no, it's, no, it's, it's Early yeah, this it's morning, they got it undone. Oh, they yeah, did? Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, well, hopefully then, uh, it last night and cleared it this morning. All those uh, BQBXs that are uh, waiting to uh, end up at their final destination. Why don't they put them on a bloody boat? Fly them over. That's, you know, that's 18 this. They should have been here in December. You, you know, know, this is the funny thing. So this is the thing, right? We Kickstarter. This is how it works, right? Number one, you pay $10 to become part of a list. So you pay the $10. So I did that. Then all of a sudden, you get... Uh, and it was like trying to buy a PlayStation 5 right now. So I'm like, been trying and trying and trying. Can't get hold of it. Hundreds of people in front of me can never get hold of it. So that sort of thing kind of happened. And I was number 62, right? So number 62, happy with that. Paid my money, paid my deposit, got in absolutely fine. Then I realized that I actually paid too much because there was a, a super whatever early bird. There was an early bird, then a super early bird. And I was part of the super early bird. So then they... I had to then change that. Then that changed something else. Then I could add extra things if I wanted them. So I bought, you know, necks and stuff like that for the hot end and stuff. That all happened. Now, again, this was supposed to arrive in December. Now, I'm not saying, you know, I know there was a global pandemic. I know there was problems with this. But, you know, I do think that perhaps... There was they a pandemic? Should have, they should, yeah, they should have... They should have what? The what? They should have... Yeah. Um, 
they should have pushed the boat out a little bit more. I don't know. And uh, I think they should have flown a few of these units over, especially my one. Um, and plus, I haven't got a bloody duck. They haven't sent me a duck. <laughs> I'm more upset about that. And I'll tell you what, there's going to be a strongly worded email going over to somebody tonight. That's for sure. So uh, we shall see. I want, a, I want a bigger duck. I want a red one. Um, but yeah, you know, like I say, um, it's a shame that, um, yeah, this is interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's very similar and Kickstarter, you know, you can just lose your money. You know, they could have yeah. taken 250,000 quid, you know, they could have run away with that and gone, not that they would have done. Cause obviously no one would have, they're not homers or TiVo, you know, they're, they're, a, <laughs> they're an established company. So, you know, that, and that's, and that's the way that it kind of rolls out. Nobody in Australia. But, but the same goes though. They are an established company, so they don't need to pre-sell their production runs. Kickstarter no. is not. That's not. I mean, I understand that you can use. You know, that it's well within the terms and conditions to use it how they've used it. I'm not saying they violated anything there, but the whole point of Kickstarter is to finance products that wouldn't come to market if that financing wasn't there. Correct. Reality have released so many machines that all they did was use Kickstarter to pre-sell a production run. So yeah. they, they, before they even, before they even, you know, turn the machines on, they knew that they'd sold however many, you know, 5,000. They could have used Dutch whatever. for packing penis. That would have been cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you know, that's, that's the thing though, isn't it? Why wouldn't you, if you can, if it's there and it's a, a great yeah. marketing tool, but I think, you know, I think even with big tree tech, I think it did backfire on them. And I, I don't, I was surprised how little they sold. And then when it all started to get like a little bit grimy and when you could still pull out, people were pulling out. A lot mm. of people were pulling out. And I was like, oh, that really sucks because I really wanted this. I really wanted to get this printer you know, out and out to market and stuff. You know, that's part of the reason why, why I backed it. Um, but again, at the same kind of time, that's when the CR6 started having some major, major problems with, with the Kickstarter campaign. And it's the communication as well. And it's people's understanding sometimes of how that communication is conveyed so are you seeing it on facebook are you seeing it on kickstarter is your email actually going to junk are you you know there's a lot there's a lot to be said there and even some of the emails they were sending you'd read through and go what you know and your interpretation of what they are saying could be very very different so i was constantly sending messages saying well what does this all mean what are you saying oh you're saying it's going to be delayed how much of a delay and of course no one could tell you anything because we're all in the same boat so I keep saying the same boat. It's pretty because I'm printing inventory. But there you go. Is this, so, I mean, this I mean, stream yard that we're running? You know what? It is. And uh, I'm doing a show. So if you don't already know and you've not been part of the conversation before, um, we use StreamYard generally um, to do multi-platform streaming on, on the Friday night. Uh, Jerry, Tripod, myself, loads of other people, Tim and that, have all used um, StreamYard for quite some time. Anyway, there's a new app called, or a new streaming service called Melon App, which is made by OBS and Streamlabs and all that kind of stuff. So I thought it'd be a good idea to change over to them. Oh boy. Um, whoa, look at that. I've got a breakage in the filament. Did you see that? Wow. Okay, so don't buy filament from them, that's for sure. Anyway, um, so anyway, then I realized that you can't now stream to multiple channels. You can only stream to one YouTube channel. So I contacted them and said, is there a chance that you can sort this feature out because that's what primarily you're going to be using it for and they said no <laughs> so i was like bye then See you later. so i had, yeah, I had a hell of a time the other day i went live and james was on there and i couldn't go live and it didn't work right and then it, it was real pixely and i was like well this is 1080p i was so happy to try it and it let me down yeah it was a shame it was a real shame and and that sucked and i'll tell you what this hasn't got bloody filament runout sensor Every printer needs a filament runout sensor. That's yeah, interesting, and it's a, and it's a super cheap addition as well. Do you know what yeah. I mean? That 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 yeah. is. Uh, it, it, I just looked at that. I thought if that. Yeah. Okay. That snapped off. Um, this filament that they provided to test with. I don't know where they got it from. Probably from TiVo. I don't know. You, you were talking a bit ago about a package getting kicked around and this and that. And uh, I sold my first big thing on my Etsy store. I sold my spawn statue. It was four hundred dollars, and that it marked twenty five percent off. And a man in Texas bought it for three hundred dollars. After me sending it free shipping and all the Etsy fees and everything, I only get one hundred and six seventy six dollars out of three hundred. So I package it up. I marked glass on every side. The sold Sharpie. I put glass on it. The mailman shows up out front. He scans it in. 
he picks it up and chucks it over his seat. Oh. I'm like, dude, I wrote glass on that. It's breakable. He goes, oh, he did? He said, is it insured? And you packaged it well, right? That's That was his answer to me. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. So it was a broken. Buy big stickers that say glass off Amazon and they're red, white letters. I don't know, something. But he yeah, yeah. took, you know, really, really irritated me. And even if I had to claim it on shipping, that means I'd have to pay the customer back and I get back a broken model. Yeah. Unless I, you know, so no matter what, I lose, even if it is insured, unless I doubled its value to 600 But I don't think that's allowed. I don't know. That sucks. No, that's, I mean, you got, I think you got to then prove that it's worth that money. Yeah, I'm hoping the man gets yeah. in Texas here uh, today or tomorrow or the next couple of days, and he's real happy with it. And then I'll start putting more stuff on there. And then you see my uh, uh, Thundercats. I got them in here on the front table, but I can't mail those. They're too big. So anyway. That sucks. Well, it's printing out quite nicely. There is a couple of artifacts on the back of the boat, um, which aren't great. Uh, but again, you know, the filament is brittle. And it's actually quite nasty stuff. Uh, so I'm going to have a little play around with that later on, I think. Probably not tonight. It's a bit late now. But, um, yeah, we, we'll get to the bottom of this, I believe. Um, but, yeah, it's not it's not bad. It's it's printed out quite nicely at the moment, even with shockingly bad filament. Uh, the build, the bit, putting it together was easy. You know, there's no... When you... <laughs> with, with the end of stuff, with the end of stuff, right, you've got that kind of... You know, putting this physical physicality onto the onto the bed is a bit of a nightmare, um, and especially if it's out of whack like the pro was last last week. Um, but uh, no, it's good. It's all good. So filament run out sensor is something that we are definitely missing. What was that, Jerry? Well, I got another camera. I was just testing it on my screen deck to make sure it switches. Very nice. Just trying to get everything working right. I, I went into the OBS and I deleted everything. I figured that's the best way to fix it. You got too much stuff in there. Delete it all and reinstall stuff. So I need to get a third camera set up somewhere. That's a, that's a good idea there, Marcel. Yeah, you could play like snooker or something. I don't know. That could be quite interesting. Yeah, so um, is there any questions? Anybody want to see anything on the printer? Or, um, yeah, you know what? Filament runout sensor, that is really, really cheapo bad isn't it i wonder if on the uh on the daughter board on the uh on the hot end if there is an adapter uh a spare pair of wires or something that uh maybe could go on i mean especially from big tree tech right i know some people will say oh you don't need to a run out sensor of course you do what happens when you get you know you get low on filament and you got to run out out of the room or you're sleeping and it runs out and you lost your print well, the good news, and I'm glad you brought it up, actually, Jerry, because in all my streams, I like to push a certain uh, filament printing company called 3D Filipin, who's is, is sponsoring the uh, the channel today. And for people that don't have filament runout sensors, you can get yourself one of these <laughs> PLA spools of filament, and uh, they're available now from 3D, 3D Filipin. Big. So bigger than your printer. Will it will it, uh, will it it survive the uh, plastic and metal? Uh, I, I doubt very much, but you know, should you need a uh, 3D filler print, huge spool of filament, um, it works out to be about 16 pounds a kilo. So, um, yeah, definitely. Is that, definitely a 10? Is that a 10? That's an 8.5. Okay, I used to have a 5 from Ziltec, and I bought a special spool holder for it, and it drove itself right off the spool holder. Oh, really? Do it. Yeah, we're trying to um, we're trying to make one of those, um, a spool holder, a droid spool holder, holder at the moment. Um, and the other thing we were talking, we were talking the other night with James about how we could maybe get the motor to spin the wheel, to spin the uh, spool. But the problem is, um, when it when it comes down off the off the spool, it's always going to pull. So unless mm. it was a unless it was a um, you know Bowden where it just goes to the side, it's always going to pull. You know, we're looking at different ways of sort of get a proximity sensor. So it, when it picks the slack up, you can move it around, but. I don't know. I might have to just do something different. Uh, anyone know the answer to this question I had earlier? Big Tree Tech SKR E uh, three Turbo. Can it be used on a CR ten mini? Uh, uh, yes. So, te so technically, yes, but the uh, the S three the, the SKR E three only has a single Z out. So, uh, if the CR ten mini has dual Z, then you'd need to buy uh, a little stepper splitter. Yeah. Then you can then you can run it. Uh, I wonder how many times the filament will uh, break on a huge roll. Really. 
Yeah, I, I mean that that's the that is the the kick with that, but uh, that's going to be a rat rig video. Rat rig are dispatching the uh, V Core um, upgrade three uh, version three upgrade to me. I think this week or have done already. Uh, we've been in conversations about that over the last couple of days, so I'm looking forward to getting that upgraded as well. Um, but um, it's so big, I can't actually move it out of the room that it's in now, so it's going to have to remain in the house, unfortunately. So uh, uh, my wife is heavily pregnant, and we're not going to get that out anytime soon. So it's going to have to stay there. Uh oh, uh, it's built for an end of three. In fact, you know what? That end of three, that board you're talking about, I've ordered one of those from Big Tree Tech, um, and I will get a duck with that one. But mark my words, and um, yes, um, I, I'm going to be doing that upgrade on the uh, on the Pro. And I was hoping to buy another three of those printers uh, today, but um, the people that I deal with do like to mess me around. So. Uh, we shall wait and see. So there's a dual Z on that one, um, James. So you will need to get a splitter on that. Yeah. Uh, how much is a higher elephant to hold up with his trunk? Well, you know. I don't understand. Our see. video quality and stream yard, I'm looking at all three of us here, obviously, looks perfect. But I'm watching it on another monitor on YouTube, and it doesn't look that great. I'm thinking, what's going on here? Um, I don't know, mate. I wish hmm. I knew. Or higher the rock. <laughs> so um, it's only streaming in 720p. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the that's the uh, that's the like the highest quality setting you can set on 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 YouTube. So, and then there's the melon. I don't know. Streamyard is is receiving it in 1080p, and then it's converting it to 720 when it streams. Melon was in 1080p the other day and looked like 250p. Yeah, it was garbage. So. And then every time you pulled up a chat, it's in the bottom right corner and it blocks that person down below. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, it does. Unfortunately, it does. Uh, you guys will find no problem with the video, according okay. to Owen. Thank you, Hello, Owen. Owen. Hope you're well. We're, uh, we're still on the bench here at the moment. You know, for 100 millimeters per second, it is kind of slow. I'm going to speed it up. Why not? Let's, let's, let's tinker with it. I guess if Thingiverse or Thangs would have had a duck on the site, then they could have downloaded it and included it with the printer. Yeah, I wish they had done, but um, it does annoy me when you know when people don't. When you do don't it. get a duck. That's a very specific thing to get annoyed about. Yeah, it is. But it's from Big Tree Tech, and they promised me <laughs> if you watch the streams, right on the last stream that I did with them. Yeah, no word of a lie. He had a great big heart of ducks, and he said he guaranteed me that I would get some ducks. So. You know, oh. and, it says it, and it says it in the bloody manual. Bold. So, yeah, and they <sighs> squeak now. The old ducks never squeak now. The newer ones squeak. There you go. Sure they sure do. It's a good one. See you later, like Chris. Halloween or Christmas time, my wife hates for me to go to the store with her because I go down the toy aisle and I push all the buttons to make everything make racket, and she just walks away like, I don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> oh good stuff good stuff so how are your projects coming along then james how's your yeah hag's not too bad so hag house is uh is sort of two thirds done i guess i've got okay. two i've got three or four more prints that need to need to do um the plan i don't know if I've, i don't know if i told you this yet but the plan so i've never painted scenery before Mike is going to try and find something that um, he hasn't painted before. So we're going to paint it on live stream, but we're going to do it drunk. Yeah. So, yeah. so, cause I feel like that's the adult way to, to, to deal with that situation. So having never printed it before, at least if I'm drunk, when I print it, I can blame that on why it looks terrible. So, <laughs> so, so that <laughs> cool. one's coming up at some point, uh, but this weekend we're doing a BLVQ build. So, um, oh, yeah, okay. so that'll yeah, yeah. be, interesting hopefully yeah. we're yeah. uh we're what sort of we're sabot it? so it's 410 by 410 by 400 okay um so we uh we, mike had uh, an s4 that we did a bunch of stuff to and we went on proper printing and we tried uh he basically he basically came up with some brackets that meant rather than your bed moving backwards and forwards your whole a frame moves and he did oh, the right. conversion on an s5 um we tried it it didn't work so um so that's been that's been <laughs> that's been an ornament in the side for some time so we're sort of trying to um trying to steal as many parts from that as we possibly can 
and okay. um and then we're gonna and then we've got all the aluminium extrusions and the linear rails and everything else and all the metal parts from ali so um so yeah so we're gonna try doing that on a live stream about four but hours not, long but not drunk not drunk god no uh, <laughs> no no so this weekend we're gonna try and do the frame um so the stream just, starts just, you guys are both sleeping you passed out well, there is other so, things you can do that are worse. You sit there and start staring at the camera, and you don't move for twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, there is that. Yeah. Anyway, you could you could be Marcel and have to sit in a green room for forty five minutes. That'd be <laughs> terrible. Exactly. I, you know, I, that another problem with that program with Melon on the left side, you see four people, and then if if there's somebody else, there'll be a little tiny down arrow. I didn't see the down arrow, and I didn't know he was there, and I felt so bad about it. And uh, that happened with another man, Chewy, who tried to pop in. I didn't know he was in the green room. Oh. Yeah, well, it, there's there's something to be said for uh, keeping to what you know, right? But um, it's a bit of a shame. It is a bit of a shame because I thought that was going to be, you know, a lot better. But if you do message StreamYards and say, hey, can you uh, bump me up for 20, uh, 1080p for seven days, they will do that. So, uh, yeah. you know, might be worth uh, might be worth just to looking at that at some you, point. They had to, a uh, trial a long time ago that was automatically in your account when you went in to log in, but that's not there now. But, yeah, I understand. I guess yeah. them try it out. So do you think you might buy one of these printers or are you still getting your Prusa Mini? Oh, I still got the Prusa Mini. It's already been ordered. Um, it's 14 to 16 weeks out. Now it's probably, I don't know, 12 weeks out. But at some point I might try that one out. Yeah, it's, uh, again, I don't know. I don't know how many more of these there. I don't know if they're going to mass produce them or if they're just going to go, oh, well, that was that and, and sort of ditch it. I don't know um i you know there's not there's not been much said about it so well joe telling done the stream on the elegoo that they came out with a printer and all the big youtubers got it and he said you know what they're not going to release this you'll never see it you'll never find it but here is one so evidently mm -hmm. something fell through on it is that the neptune 2 i think it's called elegoo i think elegoo made it they make oh. the resin printer and stuff elegoo okay. makes a lot of parts and stuff like big tree what part was it what what printer was it i don't remember what it was called Memorable stream, then. The non fan will pop it up in a minute. He'll know. Somebody will pop it up in the chat. And Don't be so wrong. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that it's a decent machine. It's just overpriced. <laughs> oh, a, gotcha. oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, the, and the Astro... price you got it on the Kickstarter, hundred yeah. percent. I'd have, yeah. I'd have bought one at the price that it was on the yeah. Kickstarter. I wouldn't have bought it on a Kickstarter, but I would have paid retail for that. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I did that Neptune. I had that Elegoo Neptune two, which I thought might might, might have been that Joe <laughs> Telling one. Now that right. one, um, that one was one hundred and fifty quid, and right. you know that is it is what it is. Uh, and it was it was epic. It was really good. Quality was awesome. No issues. But um, it'd be a shame if they don't bring that printer out. If they don't do, if it, you know, it's sold like so quick. There were nine in stock in the UK, and I was like, I should have bought more. Uh, I gave that printer away. Uh, Chelsea's got that one now um, on the stream and stuff. So, like I say, it's uh, it's a sh it would be a real shame if they don't um, if they don't produce any more of those. And I hope it's not that one. Neptune two, yeah, it was Neptune two. So that's the one we reviewed as well. Uh, and I did that with tripod a few weeks ago, and um, yeah, it like the quality is it is just amazing for what it is for for the for the cost of the printer. Absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. But you know, if you want one of these, three D Jake do have uh, or will have stock of these uh, if it hasn't already hit their warehouse. And um, as I said, there's a link in the description if you want to uh, have a look at that. It's an affiliate link, so um, they know where it came from. So if you want to click away on that, please do. If you don't, then uh, you don't need to do that either. Yeah, it was the Elegoo Neptune 2 review. Yeah, the printer that doesn't exist. That's a, sh that's a real shame. And it's funny because she asked me um, if I knew there were any more coming into stock. And uh, I was thinking probably that Evergreen uh, ship may have had some on, but I'm guessing not. That's a that's a shame. That's maybe why Elegoo aren't talking to me about it. So I'm assuming they, they make a big work. batch of them. They send them out to people. They wait to hear what the feedback is before they order more, and they probably didn't. That really sucks. That really sucks. No, that's a real shame. You all right there, James? Yeah, my uh, my DSLR just decided to uh, click itself off. 
Oh, uh, does everybody? Okay, I know both you guys have DSL DSLR cameras, and I'm looking yep. at buying a used one. Is that a good or a bad idea? Uh, what, what are you using it for? Well, for time lapsing on my resin prints. Once I get one, a Canon DSLR, like three hundred dollar camera, four hundred dollar camera. No, time I wouldn't lapses. Bother. No, I wouldn't bother. I, I'd get a Raspberry Pi, do some auto lapse with it, and just get a decent webcam, uh, like a Logitech webcam that does 1080p set your settings to 1080p and then you know i've just printed a uh, i've actually just printed the second uh webcam stand i've got one on the uh cr6 and also one on the uh ender 3 pro uh there it goes um so i'm gonna be uh i'm gonna be using that from this point onwards basically um time lapsing all the prints that i do so um i've you know, have a, have a look at that. I mean, the stuff that Tripod was doing, I think he had a DSLR, but it seems like overkill, 300 quid for a camera. When Uncle he... Uncle Jesse and another man got together and they invented this cable called the Resin Lapse. I already bought one a week ago off Etsy for $22. It hooks into the dead, deep Canon DSLR camera. It has some kind of a light on the other end. You put that in the back of the resin printer, and each time it flashes to do the next layer, it takes a picture. And when you're all done, like on Jesse's videos, is just pulling straight up out of the resin, like Octolapse, but on a resin printer. Yeah, but isn't the majority of the beginning of that going to be under resin? So you're not going to see it anyway. I know, but it's going to it's going to build so fast. The twelve hour print, you'll see it in ten seconds. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it's it's your money. <laughs> but again, you know, it's one it's one of those things. I I you know. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, you, there's other ways of doing it, of course. Um, yeah, I've I've used Octolapse on the Sidewinder, um, yeah. and I've I've got a I've got a Raspberry Pi camera that that, that sits on it, and uh, it's better simply because um, it synchronizes. So it synchronizes the tool head, so the tool head is out of the way when it takes the picture. So it, or yeah. the tool head is always at one point. So the tool as the tool head goes up, the tool head stays static. It looks like it stays static, and it just builds the model up, and it gives a yeah. really clean. That's picture. the way it'd be on a resin printer. Yeah, yeah. but if you yeah. were to do a DSLR, there's not a DS. As far as I know, there's not a way to connect your DSLR to a, to a to an OctoPi. So you would just be doing a regular time lapse, yeah. which means that your tool head would be wherever it feels like. So yeah, that's why be, I ordered that cable they developed. It's got the light on it. It plugs in DSLR. Yeah, it's so I appreciate frame. I appreciate that's for the like for the resin machine. Um, yeah. But yeah, that feels like a very expensive way to, like for 300 pounds, you could like employ an immigrant to stand there. And well, I mean, <laughs> I can use a camera. Right. For, I can use a camera for other things too. <laughs> and they're going to so. bring his own camera. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. I'm pretty sure oh, for boy. like less than 200, you could just sell a tape like a Google Pixel 1 to the inside of the screen and just take loads yeah. of pictures with that. You do what you need to do, Jerry. Like I say, you know, we're all uh, we're all spending money. Owen, how's the printing going? There you go. We'll have a we'll have a quick zoom in on that, shall we? Let's have a quick look. Uh, if I can select the right one, at the moment, it is looking kind of okay. Uh, again, there is some little artifacts at the back. It just looks I don't know. It looks good. I mean, to be honest, it the the filament is naff because it's already split already. Um, and when I was loading it in, it split as well. So the uh, so it's brittle as hell. So I guess there might be some moisture in there, or you know, it might have been might have been uh, not made as well as it could have been. I'm going to try and zoom the camera in a little bit. And I have modified this camera this week because I have had some issues with the zooming um, and, it, and the focusing. So let's move that over a little bit. Hey Sam, um, have you ever used 1109 MG servos? I've not used those. I just saw that from uh, Marcel. No, I've not used those yet. Um, but they sound in you know, any metal servo is probably going to be better than, uh, you know, those little plastic ones that, uh, you know, don't last all that long. Uh, right. I'm hoping, I'm hoping Sam, these... just so you know, your Jake yeah. 3D link doesn't work. Oh, what a pain in the ass. Hang on then. Really? Yeah, okay. it just comes up with a bit. It comes up with a bitly error. Oh, that sucks. Well, Google Jake 3D then in that case, and they won't know it came from me. And uh, I'll... Uh, if you buy one, make sure you put on your invoice that you're only buying it because Sam told you to. Exactly, exactly. Uh, as mentioned before, there are other, other ways to do it. Uh, it works really well. 
oh, okay, this is uh, Oxalap. It's also like with final FDM printing for resin printing. It's time for the image. Yeah, exactly right. Um, some adaptive discs are problematic. Can for I mean a lot of the ones that I've seen are, you know, uh, you basically just knock a switch. So you can do that on the act Oxalap. So obviously you do it in G code now. Well, most people do yeah. it in G code now. But you know the old way to do it was just to home it or or just make the X go the other other way and then you know it just hits the switch, doesn't it? Uh, I haven't used those servos. Uh, Jerry, is there a way to connect your DSLR to Octopads? It's great, much better. Yeah, I mean, there is a way because you can get uh, you can get USB out of most well Sony and uh, Canon DSLRs. You can get a USB out of that, um, so you might be okay. So you know, give it a go. Uh, the film is very brittle. Can you add moisture? No. <laughs> Uh, leave it a tough for Daniel. Good. Yeah, I mean, this stuff is. Um, oh, does the it? Link works. Oh, the link works for him. Oh. There you go. Well, it doesn't work you, for me. Are you on a Tor uh, browser? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm surfing the dark web whilst I'm trying to do this. <laughs> Nothing makes me hungry for cocaine like watching a Benchy print. <laughs> So yeah, it's it, you know the um, the filament is. Uh, I'm hoping it's going to finish before the filament uh, runs out. And again, like we've discovered, and it's not something I noticed until uh, this happened. It hasn't got a filament runout sensor, which you know, especially for big tree tech, why on earth doesn't it have that? Mm. That's um, that's not great. Proximity sensor, but it, it just it seems crazy. Seems absolutely yeah. crazy. Right, Sam, I'm going to drop off, mate, because I've got a couple of things I need to do before I need to go to bed. So, uh, All right, so you are, dear. We'll good see you soon. Finishing. Thanks, mate. I'll Thanks see you later. Everything. Bye for now. Bye. Good man. Good man. So, yeah, so we're getting there anyway. What have you got there, Jerry? Little chibi spawn and painting. Oh, nice. Let's have a look. What else have we got here? yeah i mean as i say it is as to be expected really um i think this might actually be the first benchy that i've ever printed yeah it took me like three years to finally print one there's a few little, like i said there's a few little artifacts on it um but again i don't know where this file is originally from whether or not it's been tuned for this printer whether you know it's okay uh the quality is is okay it's pretty decent um you know, if, if I was printing this for real, I probably wouldn't throw it in the bin. But it, it, like I say, just on the back there, there's just a little bit of, it looks like it's squashed a little bit. And that might be a leveling issue. Um, as I said earlier with the gantry, this side seems to be slightly ri ri rised up just a bit. Um, and that might be something to do with the overall gantry. So I'm going to uh, have a play around with that and see what we can uh, get sorted. But regarding, you know, things like popping this thing off the bed, literally this, this bed is removable. So you can literally just peel this back and it will it will just pop off um which is nice which is again different i, I mean i always print on glass so anytime i print something it, it's either on there so damn tight that you know you have to get a spatula and smack it about a little bit or uh you know do a uh a 3d printing release dance is that a metal uh, white sheet or is that that flimsy magnet thing this is this is a um i think this is a uh heated steel sheet okay it's good all right yeah it says that on there uh we've got somebody else dropping on it's the wonderful Marcel. Hey, Marcel, how you doing? How you doing? All right. You're muted, mate. Let me unmute you. There you go. Hey, there I am. How you doing? Good. Just got my servos finally in the mail. It only took a month, almost. Three and a half Oh, months. really? Yeah. But I got these ones, like I was saying, the 1109 uh, MG servos, which look pretty good. I mean, metal servos and digital and everything, so... I heard a couple good things on the uh, on the forum and stuff, but I haven't seen anybody who actually used them yet. You know, it's all just Amazon reviews, so you never know. Marcel, how long have you been printing Mr. Bagley's droids? Uh, well, I've been uh, part of it for about a year now. Okay, uh, cool. I think they're just having their one-year anniversary for the drinks oh. and droids uh, coming up pretty soon, but they've been. I think Michael Bagley's been doing it for a couple of years now, at least, I would think, but... I'm pretty sure I started 
just before last year this time because uh, that's when I started doing the R2 build. Yeah, Babby's been doing it for about five years now, same, same sort of time that I've been doing it, and it, that's when he found it on Fingerverse. Just uh, insight, um, just got the B, BQBX about three days ago. Uh, congratulations on getting it, and, and I do think you're going you're really, you're gonna to really enjoy it. Um, no, not really. I mean, the filament run-out sensor is kind of an annoyance to me, and, uh, you know, sort of thinking about it, the more I think about it, the more annoyed I am about it. Um, you don't get a duck. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the uh, that's my biggest my biggest qualm and i think yeah. you know, when you're looking at uh how you're going to use this printer and of course you know lots of people use 3d printing in different ways and uh depending on the way that you want to use it will very much depend on whether or not you want a uh you want to put a raspberry pi onto it whether or not you want to use octoprint whether or not you want to use you know the screen as some sort of computer interface or if you just want it as a standard 3D printer, you know, that's going to be very much down to you. You don't have to use the Raspberry Pi 4. You can use a 3B. There are different adapters for it, uh, whichever one you, you choose to use. Uh, what was suggested to me today was to get the 2 gig um, Raspberry Pi 4, which is what I ordered on Amazon. It was around about 50 quid, I think. And um, that'll be here tomorrow. And like I say, uh, hopefully tomorrow I'll be, um, I'll be sort of putting it together and, uh, you know, showing off what the screen can do. So we'll wait and see with that. I've got another question here. Uh, I was very happy to get it. Frankly, uh, I didn't get it until later in the summer. So I was very happy. I don't know what we're talking about here. The BQX, uh, oh. BQX thing three days ago. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was I was same same as. I didn't know even know if I was going to get it at all, to be fair. So, um, you know, the fact that we are here now, it's, um, it's cool. Um, I'm dead impressed with that. Hey there, Jerry. Hope you're well. Oh, hey, Jerry yeah. Baker. I've oh. got a uh, micro Swiss coming for the six, actually. So I'm going to be, I'm going to wait for Tripod to put his video out first, and I'll, uh, I'll have a look at that one. But um, it's, it does seem to be printing rather well, as I say. So we are going to be running out of filament in a few minutes because it snaps, and uh, either I'll try and do a live uh, filament change. You should have an option on your screen to do it. Uh, yeah, but I, you know, I don't want it to stop. But it has got a roof and a little chimney to go on yet, though, hasn't it? Yeah, it's got a bit. Well, you might have enough filament there. Well, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a direct drive. You never know. Well, it seems to be working quite nicely. Um, no, so like I say, nothing to really kind of be too concerned about, other than um, you know, just check check your stuff. Don't um, over tighten the screws. Don't um, you know, just check check yourself. Uh, make sure your power settings are right. That's always a definite for any any 3D printer, I would say. Yeah. Um, check yourself. But, check yourself. Exactly right. Exactly right. And um, like I say, it, at the bottom of it, it just looks so well built. I'm, I am dead impressed with it. I'm, I'm, I am glad I bought this one. I, you know, it was, uh, it was a choice between this and the CR6. I'm glad I didn't go with the CR6 because I, I am, although it's a good printer now, I would have been disappointed if that was my first, you know, I unboxed that and then it just arced out and did a whole bunch of crazy stuff i i think that would have been uh you know very very disappointing but i think you're going to get a good result out of this certainly if you're going to be printing things like flexibles and exotic filaments i think you're going to uh be able to especially with this direct drive i love direct drive so a lot of my a lot of my gear now i all my printers are pretty much direct drive um for the for the larger ones the rat rig the three cr10s i've got they're all bomb tech ddx's um along with um uh, slice engineering hot ends and then uh because they just don't block you don't get heat creep so creality I've never, had, I've never tried a direct drive yet on anything yet have you not yeah I, be I, good I, on my hypercube it's just things like just precise settings really you know it bowden you're pushing it's a bit like uh front and rear rear wheel drive cars you know there's a difference of opinion whichever way you look at it some people swear by bowden um i've not had a great experience especially with the creality products because of the hot ends and the way that the heat creep uh, goes into the hot end uh, and the fans fail and all that kind of stuff you, you, you're setting yourself up for failure and uh, this hobby is no longer in my opinion a cheap hobby so the fuel that you're putting into this aka your filament uh, is going to be you know expensive you know twenty dollars thirty dollars and by the if you're certainly if you're printing a robot that's maybe you know like I do which is maybe 10 15 kilos you've got some you've got some key investment into that um so time is of the essence and i you know that's that's again one of my biggest commodities time 
And uh, on top of that, I guess, uh, you know, making sure that your prints don't fail and trying to minimise the risk of that happening. So direct drive for me is certainly a, uh, a good way forward. I don't think there's going to be quite enough filament to, to do that. So I'm going to do a little hot change in a minute. Uh, but not having a sensor on it, that, that's got to be one of the first things you're going to want to do. You know, add that filament run out sensor. I'm going to go on the page later and ask them what the, what the deal is with that. Maybe they send me a duck and a filament sensor. Hey, that's so looking good, Marcel. Started working on him. Yeah, getting pretty close. I'm printing the skirt right now. Looking good. Is that the droid we're not allowed to talk about? That is the droid we're not allowed to talk about. Okay. <laughs> but it is on Michael Badley's page, so I just downloaded it and started on it early. Okay. But I don't Let's think move it's on. Let's move on, shall we? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, this is, uh, in fact, you know what? We are now, we've now bridged the, uh, we've now bridged the top. Or we are bridging the top. We might, I don't think we're going to quite have enough filament to do that little roof, uh, the little chimney on the roof, but we may do. This is, this has got to be one of the most boring live streams, isn't it? Watching a 3D printer print, surely. But yet we've got 21 people watching. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching. Yeah, please like and subscribe, everybody. Ring that bell to be notified when Sam goes live again or posts a video. Thanks, mate. It's all right. I've just got a PM from Marcel. Don't worry, mate. That's not that's not an issue. It's, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Um, it's not me or you that's got the problem. It's other people. So uh, no it's, it's the way it goes. It's the way it goes. But, um, no worries. So, again, this is my first Benchy. This is the BQBX. Literally, literally hit my doorstep at 1 p.m. this afternoon. And uh, I got more cracking, you know, straight away. Oh, thanks, Gregory. I appreciate that. Thank you again to Scott as well. Thanks for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. We're nearly there. We're nearly on that second hour. And I think by the time we hit the two hour mark, we may just be there. Um, but it's, it's, like I say, there's a few artifacts on the back. There's a couple of little wobbles, but again, that might be down to the fact that we're on a, a bench here. It's not on the proper table. Um, and I'm going to be absolutely gutted when I finish this stream and literally just go and have a bath and go to bed um, because I'd like this to be printing overnight, really, because uh, time is of the essence, of course. But um, I don't know if that's going to happen. Oh, God, it's so close. Look at that. This is tense right now. If it prints a stack, I'll be very surprised. No, nah, it won't on that. It can't do on that. Can you zoom in that camera more or no? That's, yeah, that's, that's the bit. What do you need to see? Well, I'll just do a close up on the, the benchy and the filament that's going into it. What I can do is probably move this along a little bit and get this we get this right up close. Is that an old school GoPro? Oh, that is an old school GoPro, yeah, and it works. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> it works. Sometimes it works. Here we go. Wow, is that a filament already straight up and down? Yeah. Right, here we go. It's going to get so there. Let's go over to three. There we go. Uh, what I'll do real quick then is I will do a filament change on it because, you know, we can show that that, that happens. Uh, let's get back. Let's go. I don't think I'm going to have time to find out where I've got to go for the filament change. Thank you, Jason, for $25 to Sam. Oh, cheers, dude. Right, I'm going to very quickly just pull this out. Here we go. And I'm going to quickly, as quick as I can, try and this may just go terribly wrong right now. I think it is. I can't find the end now. <laughs> Did my music just play, Marcel? Hmm? Did my music just play a minute ago or no? Nope. Oh, wow. Nope. I didn't listen. Yeah, we'll just listen. put that in real quick just in case it does tend to work. It may, may not work. Let's just pop him straight in. I can. Wow, this is a calamity. I'm trying to chase the filament? Try. <laughs> I've thought about doing that so many times. <laughs> yeah, I think we I think we're gonna Oh what a shame. Oh it's broken oh, off the bed. No. Can you believe it? Can you believe it after all that? Well look, I'll tell you what we do. We will just stop that here. Let's just let him end that and home that now. It's still successful for you, really. So what, it works a shame, isn't it? And, it? and it is my first benchy. Oh, and I'll tell you what, that artifact on the back, I think that's supposed to be like a logo. So 
where I was moaning about the artifacts, in fact, I think that is that is just a logo. But what do you think? Looks good. It's not bad, right? It's not too bad. Looks good. So, okay, I think we've just got a slight, it might be a, uh, a slight notch in there. Oh, yeah, I see it. Can you see that? Yeah, a little bit of a line move, yeah. But again, you know, unfortunately, the filament uh, was brittle, and uh, that's the reason why we didn't manage to get that one finished. But, uh, you know, I'll uh, I'll send that out to the Suez Canal and uh, hope that those guys yeah, assist them with uh, pulling that evergreen uh, tug out. But there you go, guys. Right on. And on that bombshell, oh, thanks, Jason. I really appreciate that. Thank you, dude. That's amazing. I'm coining it in. Woohoo! No, thank you. I do appreciate that, mate. That's um, that's absolutely awesome. Uh, what's this private message? Uh, probably not, Marcel, just on that. Um, <laughs> it's all good. Um, listen, thanks very much for joining me tonight. Uh, I do appreciate your input. I do appreciate you following me along on the channel. Uh, and thank you, Marcel. And thank you, Jerry. Uh, we are back live on Friday. I'm hoping to get back tomorrow and carry on with this with the Raspberry Pi installation. It's going to be a bit of a different stream, I think, because um, I'm just going to crack on and do it. I'll try and keep the chat open so we can sort of, uh, you know, have a conversation about it. On Saturday during the day at 12 o'clock UK time, uh, that's midday. Uh, myself and Lee Towsey, Mr. R2D2, we're on Droid Builders UK. We're doing a live show, which is five hours long. Can you imagine the monotony of me talking for that amount of time? Yes, you can. Of course you can. Um, ducks will be included. Money will be raised for Calm, which is the campaign against living miserably, which uh, we are... Uh, Do you have a link for that you can post? Uh, I can give you the link, which is www.droidbuilders Dakota UK, uh, and uh, we hopefully will uh, be going live at twelve o'clock on uh, on Saturday, which is uh, over the Easter Bank Holiday weekend. Um, there's loads of things going on. If you're interested in droid building, robot making, there isn't too much on 3D printing. There's a little bit, but um, ultimately it's uh, it's all about raising money for charity and having fun. So if you want to join in with that and say hello, that'd be great. But uh, thank you guys for uh, getting involved. Great stream. And, uh, and we will uh, see you soon with see another episode. Thanks, guys. All the best. Thank Bye, you. Bye. Bye. Bye, chat people. Bye-bye. Cheers, guys. <laughs>